in the past week, I attended a two-day workshop of a Council of Foreign Relations focusing on religion and foreign policy. So we talked a lot about New Middle East, 2012 election, faith and politics, and global uh, health and uh, development, as well as extremism at home and abroad. So it was a fascinating gathering. Experts of uh, foreign relations, all different uh, religious leaders from all over the country, scholars and uh, officials of the State Department, we are all sitting together and eating together and discuss about these issues. It was uh, provocative to learn from different perspectives. So throughout this two-day conference, I was keep thinking about what are the root causes of all these problems we are talking about. Why people become so extreme? What are the root causes of terrorism or extremism? If you are really angry about something or have it full of hatred in your heart or any kind of uh, delusion you have, or extremely unhappy, or you feel hopeless and helpless, they could trigger toward that extremism. So we need to think about the root cause of the problem. And when I was thinking about there in, in the meeting of all these uh, extremely exciting and interesting topics and sessions, we need to make a really mindful choice. Mindful choice in our personal relationships and mindful choice in our foreign relations. So this morning, I want to talk about uh, this mindful choice of a loving kindness. In order to help our troubled world, so much of a destructiveness, we need to cultivate loving kindness in our thought, in our words, and in our action. In order to build peace and harmony in our world in this 21st century. So loving kindness and compassion becomes a necessity. It's not a luxury anymore. We need this one. We need this uh, cultivating loving kindness in our heart living with a living kindness and compassion with the life around us and in the world. So it is kind of a functional necessity to cultivate this um, mindfulness of uh, loving kindness. When we use our minds and bodies, as we chant the Irwan Sang vow, by embodying Irwan Sang, Dharmakaya Buddha, we practice with utmost devotion to use our mind and body perfectly, impartially. So this means that in our practice, we practice to use our mind and body exactly as our Buddha nature, which is symbolized here. So when we see things, when we hear things, when we smell, or using our tongue, talk, or use whole our body, touch, and using our mind. We have to make a mindful choice over what is right and reject what is not right. So in one Buddhist definition of what is right is loving kindness and wisdom, the serenity. And what is not right is the opposite of this, delusions, disturbance. And if you have hatred, anger, or, or greed, all those are not right to have. So we have to reject them if it arises in our mind or in our life. So it is critical to practice this mindful choice of every moment of your life. Be mindful of your loving kindness of your Buddha nature. Your inborn compassion of your Buddha nature. 
even if we engage this a very deep meditative uh, practice, there are so many people meditating. And even you have a wisdom, if we cannot practice in our daily life using our minds and bodies, then this is not enough. Meditation is not enough, wisdom is not enough. We must bring wisdom and meditation in our daily activity. This is like a tree, a fruit tree, have a very strong root, root is meditation in our life as human life, and the good trunk and branches, got lots of leaves and beautiful flowers, but do not bear fruit. What is the purpose of growing this uh, apple tree if they don't produce an apple at all? Even if it's a beautiful flowers in the spring, a lot of leaves and good branches and branches, and very strong root underneath. So this is the one, it's uh, thinking about our life is they bringing fruit so loving kindness and meditation in one Buddhism is a fruit of our practice. So your meditation, your serenity, your equilibrium, and your wisdom must be practiced in everyday life to make a mindful choice of loving kindness and compassion. So there are two kinds of loving kindness and compassion. One is a secular, you know all about it. The secular loving kindness comes from your attachment. When you love somebody, of course you, you have compassion and loving kindness. But it has a boundaries. Someone who did a good thing to me, we have a loving kindness to them. So this is a secular one. It is full of it in our human life. And second, very important quality, I call it is a sacred loving kindness and compassion. It's a true loving kindness and compassion. Means that unconditional. Means that it's not coming from any limited uh, boundaries, but it is infinite. Why? Why we have to practice this unlimited, unconditional loving kindness and compassion? Because of this, because of your Buddha nature, because of interdependency of everyone and everything, which is described in one Buddhist teaching as fourfold grace. We are all dependent on each other. We are all interconnected. If you don't practice loving kindness and compassion, then you will have a lot of uh, the other quality. It's uh, full of it in our daily life. A lot of hatred and negativity, angry people. When you drive down there, if somebody cutting you, what do you feel? Do you react? Do you, not, do you cut it back? <laughs> or, okay, let them be. He or she might have a specific reason to cut me, so let them be. Instead of reacting it, you just observe, sit back, and cultivate and use this loving kindness. Apply any situation arise in your life. So practice of meditation and practice this loving kindness meditation helps us to purify our mind. So, so Tessan said that the great loving kindness and great compassion of Buddha radiate more warmth and brightness than sun. Where this loving kindness and compassion reach, the ignorant minds of sentient beings melt away into the mind of wisdom. Their minds of cruelty melt away into the mind of loving kindness and compassion. So here we can learn two things. One is that we can learn from sun in the sky. So if you look at the sun, it's a beautiful sunshine today, beautiful weather. When you look at the sun, sun doesn't give you any boundaries. Sun doesn't give you um, demand. If you offer to me, I will give you a favor and shine on you. Sun never said that. And if you look at the sun, sun is unconditional and infinite, open to everybody. 
whether you open to look at the sun or not, whether you appreciate sun or not, but sun radiating the loving generosity to everyone. So we can learn from sun to be like that. We don't just uh, give our love and generosity to someone who do good things to me, but learning from sun that we learn to embrace everything and everyone with this unconditional and infinite love. And the other lesson from this passage is that Buddha's loving kindness and compassion is brighter than sun and warmer than sun. But sun can shine on you, but cannot change your ignorance. Unless you look at it, cannot change your cruelty unless you are willing to let it go. But Buddha's teaching, all this teaching, cultivating insight and wisdom so we can let go of uh, ignorance. Ignorance is like a darkness. When we have a sun light, all this kind of electric light, if it's a bright, the light is like wisdom, then darkness disappears. If, it, if we don't have a light, that is pitch darkness, you cannot see things as they are. So it is critical to cultivate this kind of a, a wisdom, learning from Buddha's teaching, Buddha's loving and compassion. And second one, he talked about the, the cruelty in our mind. When you learn this uh, truth of emptiness or principle of cause and fa effect, what goes around comes around. If you learn this wisdom, you don't want to be negative and cruel to anybody else because it will come back to me. If you want loving kindness, if you want understanding, acceptance, freedom, happiness, and joy, we have to ready those qualities to life around us. So Buddha's teaching is really changing a mind of cruelty into loving kindness. That's why Sote San talked about in this passage that learn from the nature, learn from the sun unlimited capacity of embracing and generosity. At the same time, learn all teachings of Buddha Dharma, apply in your life, and change cruelty into loving kindness. Change ignorant mind into mind of wisdom. So it is like an open gift. This sunshine, this Buddha Dharma is often gift to everybody. It's a complete generosity. It is the basic openness of compassion we learn from this teaching, Buddha Dharma and, and uh, nature, that we can open our heart. We can open our mind to life around us without demanding anything. So, Learning this uh, loving kindness and compassion is a foundation for our right speech. So when you speak, anytime you speak either with your children, your spouse, or a stranger in the street, practice this loving kindness and compassion. And right, right action. Loving kindness is a foundation for uh, right livelihood. So loving kindness and compassion is always need to be balanced by wisdom. If you just have a full of love without wisdom, you can spoil your children. If you have just wisdom without love, then it's again, it's not, not complete. So always we have a loving kindness and wisdom together. The three aspects of our Buddha nature is that meditative concentration, and wisdom and loving kindness. So the practice of a loving kindness counteract an antidote to any ill will, resentment, anger, or indifference which cause misery in human life. This quality of a loving kindness promotes a universal harmony 
if we have that kind of a mind of Buddha nature, like a sun shining all the time, like a Buddha Dharma giving us this kind of wisdom and quality of a loving kindness, then we can tear down all the boundaries and, and barriers. By developing loving kindness, our heart expanding. Our heart is not only just thinking about the me, my, me, mine all the time. Our mind is expanding. You are tearing down the cage of your ego and expanding it to the larger circle and expanding it, your relatives, family, friends, and coworkers, <coughs> and expanding to the society, expanding to the whole nation, expanding to the whole uh, <coughs> world. In one Buddhism, this uh, fruit of our practice called uh, loving kindness and compassion, in Korean language, is jabi. Uh, ja means loving kindness, bi means compassion. So loving kindness is the wish to promote the well-being of all. When we pray at the end, let us deepen and strengthen our love for all. Not just for me or for my family or for my friends, but for all. You are expanding this circle. When we have this loving kindness, we have a compassion now. Compassion is a feeling of empathy that arise when you feel suffering of others. So when you understand this loving kindness, the quality of loving kindness and compassion, it is really make us happy. Think about what makes you happy. What makes you really happy? Neuroscientists found through brain image study, pleasure center in the brain, the part of our brain that are active when we experience pleasure, are equally active when we observe someone giving money to charity as when we receive money ourselves. So giving compassion is really a way to make you happier. In fact, loving kindness makes us happier than buying things for ourselves. In an experiment by Harvard University, participants received a sum of money. So half the participants were instructed to use this money for themselves, and the other half of the participant was instructed to use this money for others. The result was uh, so uh, great that everyone who spent the money on somebody else has a much higher level of happiness than someone spend the money for themselves. So if you want to be a happier person, this is a message that practices uh, compassion. Also, loving kindness makes people attractive. A major secret to attractiveness is a kind of a heart, a kind heart. So according to this study on dating preference, researchers found that one trait both genders agreed was important in potential partners, kindness. So think about the kindness. You don't need any money to be kind. You don't need any money to be compassionate. So this is the, the critical element in today's world to have this kind of a kindness and loving, especially loving kindness. Also, loving kindness boosts our health and longevity. In a study of over 400 elderly people, found that those who helped others more were healthier, happier, and live longer than others. So if you want to be healthy, and if you want to live a long life, enjoy your life, then 
practice loving kindness, practice compassion. To practice uh, loving kindness or how to practice loving kindness in our daily life, the first step is that cultivate loving kindness and, and compassion toward yourself. It is a critical first element. Unless you have this quality, feel love and compassion and genuine love for yourself. If you really understand that you are wish, you are willing to cultivate this uh, love, loving kindness as, as well as uh, your genuine concern for your genuine uh, love for yourself, that quality can help you to understand others when they are in trouble, when they are suffering. Those others who are in, in difficult situation, they do have the same wish like you to have this genuine love for themselves. So developing and cultivating our mind of loving compassion is critical. So in the morning and in the evening, as, as much as possible, the first thing you do is that practice this loving kindness prayer. You can practice it anytime when you are tired or when you have challenges or when you have any problems. So may I be happy. May I be healthy. May I be safe. May I be content. May I love myself as I am just as I am, no need to change it. May I love myself just as I am, no matter what happens. So practice it throughout the day. That will change the quality of the loving kindness in your heart, in your life. Second, practice this mindful choice of loving kindness and compassion for others. If you know anybody who are in this struggle or in uh, suffering. With understanding of our interdependency and interconnectedness, practice this uh, loving kindness prayer for them. With a feeling of empathy with those afflicted by suffering, fear, hurt, and sorrow. So you can think about anybody in your immediate circle, if they go through this uh, difficult time, you can imagine that person or a few people together that may you be happy. This is your prayer, this is your meditation to those who are experiencing suffering or fear or hurt or sorrow. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be safe. May you find the wisdom to let go of all those struggles you are experiencing now. May you love yourself just as you are. So if you keep practicing in sending that loving kindness to those people. There is also scientific research on this one too. A patient in the hospital doesn't know that somebody, many people out there pray for them. If a patient has a consistent prayer receiving from their families or friends or teachers, they recover much quickly than those who do not receive those prayers. So there is a power of a prayer because the energy we all share, the energy of a life in everybody is all shared by everyone else. So loving kindness is good for everybody, good for you and good for your friends, your family. If, if you have a, a loving, kind person in your family, if you have a loving, kind, unconditionally loving, kind person in, as your friend, as, as your teacher, think about it. That is spreading not only to our whole family, to our society, to our whole community, and to our nation, and to our world. 
So loving kindness, when you smile at somebody with loving kindness, they will smile back at you. It makes a really difference. When we practice this loving kindness, it is contagious. It's spreading it. So let us find ways to use and cultivate this loving kindness throughout the world, through your immediate circle and expanding in to the larger circle and including all. In the beginning, we pray well-being and the loving kindness for those uh, your immediate circle, and then larger, you know, may all Americans be happy, healthy, safe, content, and love themselves. And then expanding to whole humanity. May seven billion people on earth be happy, healthy, safe, content, and love themselves. And then you're expanding larger circle to all living beings. May all living beings, including animals and with all different forms of life, be happy, healthy, safe, content, and love themselves as they are. So we can expand this prayer. This is the second step. And third step, this is a very distinctive characteristic of a one Buddhism. The third step is to make a mindful choice of a loving kindness and compassion in action. Praying or sending the loving kindness, it's a good foundation. Now we need to use this good foundation, good quality of loving kindness and compassion in our action, in our daily action. So one Buddhism emphasized that expressing your loving kindness and compassion in concrete actions and promoting this uh, peace and harmony in our world. The One Buddhism uh, have a very specific programs to do this. The goal of a One Buddhist practice is that to unite inner meditative development with the external action in the world. So when we cultivate this loving kindness, for ourselves and for others. This is a very creative source and wonderful and powerful force that can be balanced in our daily activities. We can express it now in our transformation, bringing our benefit of a meditation of loving kindness and this quality of a very uh, loving and compassionate life to benefit everybody. So the love and compassion in our heart have to find the way in our external world as a way to channel our loving kindness in the form of a concrete actions. So for loving kindness and compassion to be an effective agent of a change, we need to see all the opportunity available to us to act. So in this 21st century, cultivating this kind of uh, loving kindness to counteract disturbance of our time, extremism, or any different problems we encounter, is that we have to go back to the root causes of the problem. Normally, it is expression of their inner conflict. So we have to deal with the human psychic and human conscious level to shift from hatred and anger to loving kindness, to shift the fear to love. So it is possible to find a more spiritual and ethical solution of our problem in our world. So all of us here, learning this teaching of Dharma, cultivating loving kindness toward ourselves, and cultivating loving kindness toward the life around you, expanding and that heartfelt love and meditation for whole humanity on all forms of life, at the same time, 
finds a way to concretely practice this loving kindness in our daily life. Remember that loving kindness and compassion is the quality at your psychological level is a vital to achieve real happiness, to achieve a real freedom, and to achieve a greater peace. So from today and the coming weeks and months, focus on cultivating this loving kindness and Use your mind and body with a loving kindness and compassion. So you could enjoy your living, you live well with this loving kindness, and then help others to live well.